everyone and welcome to a new discussion which we are going to have on types of aquifers. This is in uh, basically in two parts and uh, one by one we will take this one. Yesterday or in previous discussion we have uh, very briefly touched about uh, what is aquifer that is the uh, water bearing strata and now we will uh, see how the best uh, definition we can assign. There are different definitions given in literature. So, uh, some of them which are more common and used uh, which are I am going to discuss first and then types of aquifer we will also discuss. So, as you know that an aquifer is an underground because it is a subsurface uh, feature. So, underground layer of water bearing permeable rock. So, each word here is important it is water bearing that means it is saturated with water and permeable means it, it should allow water to uh, move from one place to another within that. Uh, a layer and uh, these layers may be igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks or metamorphic rocks. But uh, these uh, uh, the permeability may be because of uh, sedimentary rocks like uh, pore connectivity and other things within the sediments or may be rock fractures or may be unconsolidated material, loose material uh, like in, in uh, example of indo gangetic plain or dune valley or other parts of the uh, country where things are not hard rock, but they are filled with the, uh, some kind of sediments may be coarser may be fine like dune belly is having coarser material whereas, uh, uh, indo gangetic plain is generally having finer material sand starting from sand and there are clays are also there. So, overall it is a, uh, a subsurface feature a strata layer which is full of water and all also allows water to move from one place to another. Then or other kind of definitions you may find in the literature a more brief definition is that an aquifer is a body of porous rock or sediment saturated with ground water. Now, uh, if uh, like in the above definition if the permeability is not there a porous rock uh, may be there, but if it is not saturated with water or it does not allow the water to move from one place to another then there kind there might be the problem. Anyway, this is how some people define or aquifer can also be defined in a little lengthier definition that it is stratum or zone below the surface of course, it is an underground feature of the rock capable of storing water and from which water can also be readily extracted in significant quantities. It would be only possible if rocks are also permeable. So, pores uh, or uh, this uh, permeability will allow water to store, but uh, whether I can exploit that water easily that is also important. So, this definition in that way is uh, quite befitting. Now, also it can be said that the ability of an aquifer to transmit water is governed by its permeability and this is what I was mentioning that uh, if a aquifer, if a underground layer may be saturated with water. But if it does not have the good permeability then it is I, I would say no use of that. So, ability of an aquifer or a layer underground layer which is saturated with water should allow transmit water means water should move from one place to another is governed by its permeability. High permeability means you can uh, the water will move at a very high speed. In previous discussion I also said the movement of water that transmissivity is generally very slow, but depending on rock type depending on saturation and thickness and many other factors also that we will be having separate discussion detailed discussion on that subject. Now, we have in the previous uh, def while defining aquifer we have used a term permeability. So, permeability uh, of an aquifer uh, may be of uh, you know 10 to power minus 5. So, it is a very small uh, movement of water meter per second. So, uh, you know uh, if you uh, in convert in hours then it, it is a still it is a very small value. So, that is why I, uh, I have been saying that the movement of water in underground or in aquifer is very slow and therefore, that is why it is said that uh, you know in practice people are advised those who are using tube wells or uh, you know withdrawing water from ground that you withdraw water for some time may be an hour or 40 minutes uh, 30 minutes and then leave it and then after 2-3 hours again you draw. 
why because you allow water to move towards the well because that much time would it will take but it is not in every condition in some places if you withdraw water in in the morning then you should withdraw water in the evening or in some places if you water uh, you can withdraw water only one time secondly also it is said that uh, even in past time when we had the uh, mostly dug wells open wells people used to go and fetch the water only in the morning time why so that means it was allowing water to move towards the well within 24 hours no so people knew that the movement of water in subsurface condition within an aquifer is quite slow and if you keep withdrawing water then there will be problem the well may collapse and uh, the turbidity may increase there may be subsurface cavity from where the water is going up and all kinds of problems so overall a well may fail if you keep withdrawing water and if there is not sufficient water available within the aquifer so these are the understanding one has to develop that the movement of water in subsurface aquifers or in uh, underground layers is really very slow so there are two end members in the spectrum of type of aquifers so now uh, one is uh, of course uh, the confined aquifers which are the most preferable aquifers from where you can withdraw really good water but uh, another extreme in this spectrum is unconfined aquifers so that means they are open to atmospheric pressure so or sometimes people also call piezometric aquifer so these are the two end members in between there are other types of aquifers uh, which also exist depending on the geological formations in subsurface condition so one example here is shown which is an example of an uh, you know a confined aquifer so we will see what is first uh, uh, unconfined and confined so if we define the confined unconfined aquifer that receive water directly from the surface while a confined aquifer is trapped between two layers of rocks and these layers have to be impermeable that means they will not allow water uh, out of uh, that, uh, that layer which is aquifer so if a layer which is uh, full of water, uh, saturated with water and it is confined from top and bottom with a, uh, a impermeable layer then that uh, aquifer is called confined aquifer whereas an aquifer which is open and they directly is get water rain water then that is unconfined aquifer. so uh, there are uh, most of uh, uh, aquifers especially in hard rock terrain in the country are unconfined aquifers and that is why well goes dry in the summer months in dry season that is the problem if that would have been a confined aquifer throughout the country if we think that kind of scenario then we may have water throughout the year in those wells because the recharging might be taking place as it is shown in this figure also that recharging is taking place to this confined aquifer so water supply may be there for longer time whereas unconfined aquifer you don't have a another impervious layers over that and then that may that part may be dry so this is what the unconfined aquifer is and of course below part is the confined aquifer now we continue on this that unconfined aquifers are also water table or uh, ferritic aquifers because in this uh, their upper boundary is impervious or it is uh, the water table or ferritic surface so in in this case like here this is unconfined aquifer scenario and this is the water table and which is directly you can say open to except for soil little soil cover it is directly open to atmosphere and then uh, in that if the rain occurs then the water can reach very easily to unconfined aquifer and uh, whereas these are the uh, you know uh, this is the confined uh, aquifers as you can see two impermeable layers confining layers or impervious layers we say they are making so you can see here this is conf this becomes confined aquifer there might be a scenario that we are having a series of confined aquifers like here another confined aquifers because below our top of this we are seeing in this figure confining layer or impervious layer and below of this might be also 
or maybe bedrock which is itself is a uh, confining layer might be because if it does not have fracture weathering or uh, you know other openings then it will not allow water to go anywhere. So, water will have a uh, better you know storage capacity within this. So, uh, we continue that uh, that uh, the top part which we have already discussed also earlier that the zone of aeration and that part of the earth which is starting from top and uh, which involves also the soil and maybe some rocks also which is not fully saturated with water. So, pores may be filled with either air or water or mixed and this is the open space while all the open space in the zone of saturation is filled with the ground water. So, aeration means there is a air and uh, also if you see a, uh, a zoom part is shown here that the, uh, the, the one part is a, you know you are having a, this is a, a zone of a aeration is shown then below of that you are having water table then definitely you are having zone of saturation. So, this is a, what is the our ground water there we cannot say here it is confined aquifer or not because we are not seeing bottom layer, but we can assume here and uh, this is what the water which is coming and capillary fringe. So, this part has been zoomed that zone of saturation and you can also have a capillary fringe means allowing water to move upward in certain cases and such capillary fringes movement also carries salt. So, if this capillary action is taking place near the surface in case of shallow ground water conditions, then the salts comes on the surface. And the problem of salinization, alkalization uh, happens like uh, I also discussed in previous discussion in Punjab or some parts of Haryana too. So, the ferritic zone or zone of saturation is part of an aquifer below the water table is there and in which relatively all pores and fractures are saturated with water. So, that is what is there, but if there is a sloping uh, scenario or uh, there is a uh, like water table here which is having an inclined surface maybe locally then the flow of ground water will take place. If it is a completely horizontal uh, layering system then of course, water will not flow unless you start withdrawing the water. Then water in subsurface condition within an aquifer it will start flowing towards the well because a drawdown will be created. D discussion on drawdown uh, we will have little later. So, this part is called Bedos zone or zone of erosion or the part which is saturated with water pores are saturated with water is also called ferritic zone or zone of saturation and that may be your aquifer. So, without knowing the top and bottom impervious layer we will only call aquifer, but if it is a we know then we may call confined environment. So, in most of the hard rock terrain conditions in India which is a large part if water is being withdrawn then that is a, a condition of unconfined aquifer and uh, you know recharging unconfined aquifer is much easier because the all the surface is above that is available to recharge. So, the above the water table is the bedos zone or zone of aeration or unsaturated zone this part we have already discussed uh, at least twice. So, I am going little you know faster in this the capillary fringe is the subsurface layer in which ground water seeps up, seeps up, moves upward because of capillary action. The tubes are so small that it because of surface tension the water can come up. So, from the water table by capillary action to fill the pores and uh, I also said that this happens uh, more in case of uh, shallow ground water conditions and comes on the surface. So, it poses at the base of capillary fringe are filled with water due to tension saturation or surface tension. So, this uh, saturated portion of the capillary fringe is less than total capillary rise and uh, because of uh, presence of mixed in pore size. It is not necessary that throughout a geological formation you would have all pores of the same size. So, the pores may have different size therefore, the capillary fringe or capillary tubes uh, diameter may also change. So, every places it may not have the same action likewise. So, here the capillary fringe is taking place uh, it is shown here and a water table of course, the capillary fringe is always 
uh, above the uh, uh, above the water table and below that you are having saturated zone. So, if pore size is small and relatively uniform it is possible that the soils can be completely saturated with water for several feet above the water table and that creates the problem of salinization. So, the best solution in these situations that lower the water table. So, capillary action does not take place near the surface and it will the salts will not come on the surface. So, crops can grow easily or as people thought earlier wherever their people have found in past log, water logging they planted a trees like eucalyptus which consumes lot of water it is the evapotranspiration is much higher in case of eucalyptus trees and uh, that is why uh, you know this but uh, it also harms the overall ecosystem. So, that has to be that solution is also not perfect this is why point is. So, water table as we know is the upper surface of the zone of saturation we have seen water table is the surface separating the zones of aeration and saturation and it can also be simply explained as the upper level below which the ground is saturated. Why this uh, sort of repetition I am bringing because this these are the terms which will be we will be using all the time in our this course or in this discussion. Now, uh, infiltration and percolations these two processes are also equally important in case of groundwater recharge. So, infiltration is the process by which water on the ground surface enters the soil. So, it happens only in the top part within the soil layer. And whereas, uh, percolation will happen downward below uh, the soil and going towards the water table that is what is percolation is. So, here like here infiltration is taking place from top layer and then subsequently the percolation will take place and then it reaches to the water table or to the ground water. There, so, if there is a precipitation that some certain part as we know we have uh, learned through the hydrologic cycle that there might be some inceptions, there may be some infiltration depending on slope conditions and soil conditions. There may be surface runoff and through flow also within the soil layer and then there might be some seepage and uh, river and ultimately it goes downward to the river if, uh, if it is uh, charging the groundwater is charging the river which we will also see the differences whether river is being charged or river is charging groundwater regime that those uh, terminology we will see little later. So, in this is schematic what we can see that infiltrate infiltration and then subsequently it is the percolation and this is the unsaturated or bedose zone this part this is unsaturated. Evaporation from surface from soil surface may take place only only within the top layer the soil surface. So, within few centimeters, but uh, this uh, capillary rise may bring water and uh, then more evaporation can occur. So, this is what if uh, in those water logged areas where shallow water conditions are there, the people are trying to bring the water table little lower. So, that capillary rise does not happen very smoothly and of course, below that is the saturated zone or ground water zone. So, uh, for uh, a part one of types of aquifer we are ending and uh, we in the next we will see few more types of aquifers. So, in this one we have mainly seen two types of aquifers confined aquifers and unconfined aquifers. So, thank you very much.